Do you want to read a passage okay. from? From one of them. Right. Um, Just so that the audience gets a flavor for your prose. Well, um, Donette and I sort of went through this last night, which is why we have papers. Donette is the scholar, and she made a copy of it. So I think I'm kind of getting her off this thing. Is that OK? No, it's good? fine. OK. Um, here's one I'm going to read for you. Um, and I thought I had them all lined up. Anna has a position as a, an editor at a small imprint in a large um, um, mainstream publisher. And this is something that I'm really, you know, I'm just annoyed about, that really black writers get ghettoized in a way so that you may be published by Random House, but actually you are in an imprint in Random House, and that imprint is dedicated to writers of color. Well, when this first started to happen, I, would, I used to think, well, this is a transitional phase. This is to get writers of color recognized, and then they'd be merged. But that's not what's happening. That's not what. Anyhow, um, Anna loses her position. She's losing her position. There is an African-American man who is coming into her position. And the whole idea is that he knows the culture. She doesn't. Her friend, Paula, who is also a Caribbean immigrant, doesn't take this well. She says, um, I warned you, Anna. Um, we build, they rule. There should be a sign at the entrance of JFK. You build, we rule. Not that promise at the foot of the Statue of Liberty about giving me your tired and your poor. Your poor, yes. They'll take the poor, but they won't take the tired. They expect us to work. That's your job. That was your job, Anna. Your job was to build Equiano, which is a small press imprint. They wanted to see if it would succeed before they moved to the next phase. They were already thinking of a merger with McDuffie when they put you in charge of Equiano. It was their plan. If you made Equiano profitable, they would expand. But of course, they can't let you rule. They rule. They. Paula conflates Tanya Foster and Tim Green with all the theys in America. That's the bargain they made with us, she says. That was not my bargain. I worked hard. Anna's voice is barely, um, is barely above a whisper. I'm not saying it's right or it's fair. It's just the way things are, Paula says. I'm sorry to hear this is happening to you, but you should have been prepared. Don't, Paula. Anna tries hard to keep her voice even. I need you on my side. I am on your side. But you insist on believing in all that stuff about assimilation. The ancestors of all Americans may have been born in another country, except, of course, the Native American, but they all suffer from collective amnesia. Well, assimilation is for the next generation, not for us. Paula grimaces. And even the next generation gets amnesia in a heartbeat. Soon they expect the new crop of immigrants to work while they rule, because now they're speaking with American accents. Now they have American birth certificates. I'm jumping around a bit. Um, you choose to live outside the Caribbean immigrant community, Anna. If not for me, you wouldn't know how to shop for West Indian food. Um, she has stirred Paula up. She has invited her to lunch, expecting sympathy. But all she has managed to do is to bring up an old quarrel they have never settled. It isn't that she has not had regrets, that in the cold, dark, drab, leafless winter months, she has not berated herself for turning her back on blue skies, turquoise waters, sun-filled days, and green leaf trees. She sometimes wonders if she had not been foolhardy to sever herself from the comfort of people with whom she shares history, culture, myths. What or who she would have been had she never emigrated is a question that keeps immigrants tossing and turning in their beds at night. It's not fair what Tane Foster did to you, Paula says, her voice calmer now. It's not right, but without a ghetto, Anna cringes. She does not want to live in a country within a country. She does not want to be limited to a ghetto. Let's not start that again, she admonishes her. Paula rephrases the sentence Anna has not allowed her to finish. She chooses a more anodyne word. OK, not a ghetto, a community, Anna. Without a community to fight for you, you're going to be exploited. You need to understand that. 
I don't think everything has to be about politics, Anna says. Everything is about politics. That's the way of the world. We are not allowed to be ambitious here. You, my dear Anna, she points her fork at her, you are not allowed to be ambitious. Don't ever forget that here you are a Caribbean immigrant. Stick to your own people. You can rely on them. I did a lot of jumping around, but that's the boundary there. So from that particular passage that you read, do you think part of the problem with Anna is that she buys into the myth of America um, and that she has assimilated to the extent that she has in some ways forgotten cultural roots and that's what she's grappling with and that's what Paula is trying to remind her? Well, I think it isn't that she has bought into it, it's that she, it's a dream for her. She wants that to happen. But each time she has these blockades, you know, and Paula keeps giving her a reality, a reality meter. And I, I, I don't know if you remember that conversation where um, um, Paula says to her, you know, this, it's a myth about the melting pot. And mm -hmm. then Paula says, well, who'd want to melt anyhow? Mm -hmm. And she says, you know, you, you'd lose your identity. And um, so that's, that's Paula's position. But um, Anna keeps hoping and wishing that she could, in fact, assimilate. But every move she makes, um, there is that block. And I think the hardest for her is that she's very good at her job. She's done well. She's brought money for this imprint. In fact, this imprint has done much better than it ever was going to do. And then um, she's pushed out just when she succeeds in doing that because the person who comes in says, well, now that we're doing well, um, you know, you don't understand uh, the American culture. You don't know what kind of books that they'd want to read. Uh, and it's interesting how she resolves that, for me anyhow.